We're back here on Open. Our next guests are producing a short documentary highlighting the literacy crisis within the borough of the Bronx. They're calling it 1.5 million. Before we introduce them, let's check out a little bit of 1.5 million. In the 1970s, the Bronx burned. It took one of the nation's largest urban rebuilding efforts to revitalize its communities and rejuvenate its population. Today, only one independent bookstore exists in the Bronx. That's right, a population of 1.5 million has one local bookstore. The Bronx yearns for more education hubs. It begins with the belief that it's right to invest in the future of Bronxites. We no longer have to answer the question, does the Bronx read? We do. And joining us now in studio, telling us more about 1.5 million, our executive producer, Gregory Hernandez, and associate producer, Edwin Torres. And guys, welcome. Thank you for Hi. having us. Thank God. you. I shared a little bit. You, got, you know, I think for what you guys are doing, is really bridging a gap. Because when you talk about literacy here in our borough, uh, I've done stories, we've done stories about no real bookstores, Barnes & Noble's out there in Co-op City, the last entity that we had, that's snatched. And, you know, you guys now want to take this and, and really capture it and take it to a higher level. Give us a little bit more about, you know, what was, what was behind this whole thing. Sure. So uh, the Bronx was the last borough to go to Barnes & Noble and the first one to be completely without one. So in this documentary, we're highlighting the stories of what Bronxites are doing. Uh, in two words, I can sum up this documentary. Bronx resiliency. So we do have libraries. We don't have bookstores, although now we have the Lip Bar which was opened by a Bronx native and resident. We had to develop a literacy ecosystem here, and we're highlighting what Bronxites are doing to create that solution. To How long has this been in the works? Uh, well, I got on in January, but Greg has been working on it for some time, and uh, I discovered him through Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw what he was doing, and you know, another Bronx filmmaker knowing that you, know, you can't do this alone, so I wanted to participate and be a part of it. So you know, it was really great to work with him. And you know what he's doing is like really cool because I live here and I, I used to have fond memories at that Barnes and Noble and then when it went away now it's like a clothing store yeah and now it's like you know completely different and now I don't have a place where I can just purchase a book. I mean think about it. I mean, well, it's not just you know you have Barnes and Nobles right and you said dang that's the only thing we really had for for a long period of time. You take that out. You talk about the borough of the Bronx, 42 square miles, the borough of the Bronx, and you got 1.5 million people that don't even have access to a bookstore. What has been the response as you go out and do these interviews and prepare this short documentary? What has been the response of people that you've been coming into contact with? Sure, yeah. So the response has been one of anger, but then also taking the time to think about it, put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is an opportunity to what? Go on an upward trajectory towards success. We know we lost this. Maybe we don't need Barnes & Nobles after all. Because they said they would return within 24 to 36 months. I believe we're around month 29 or 30. I don't know if they're going to make it. But it is an opportunity for Bronx sites to say, okay, let's take a step forward. So we've interviewed people who have started community libraries, little free libraries, Bronx book fairs, Bronx book festivals. Uh, we've attended conferences, and obviously Noel Santos with the Lip Bar. So it's an opportunity for Bronx sites to say, okay, homegrown, ownership, let's take into account what we need to do to, once again, end this crisis. Where are you, where are you taking it from here? And the uh, well, basically, I've been helping him contact people and really just discover the initiatives of people bringing more reading and literature to the Bronx. And basically, the point of the documentary is to really just highlight, you know, the response to not having a bookstore and basically showing off the initiatives of bringing more books to and showing that it's more important not just for like you know doing essays or like taking tests. It's important for like life and leisure, you know, and just like living and like you know trying to bring attention to the to the joy of reading a book. So what I've been doing is working with Gregory and just discovering all these initiatives, some that are right up the block from where I live. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to just see this like happen and it's really evolving. And what we also want to do is get people together and like form a new plan to like really, really make reading and literature a mainstay in the Bronx. When we talk about literature being a mainstay in the Bronx, there's a lot of people out there who have this desire, right? And I know that you did the work. You're out there interviewing people. You're doing the background. For everybody that does this kind of thing, there's this wow moment while you're doing your work, mm -hmm. right? That you talk to somebody, that becomes, there becomes this wow moment. What was that wow moment for you in all of this? Um, a year ago, walking into the space for the Lit Bar and just seeing it barren there and talking to Noelle about how she's going to design the store. 
and saying to myself, wow, this will be walking distance from me. A bookstore will supplement the library for me. Getting to hug Noel, shake her hand, talk to her, and then also talking to our other collaborators. Those are the wow moments for me because you're actually talking to people who are from here, care, and will actually make a difference. Mm -hmm. And having that, knowing that it's going to be in your story, it's a wow moment. As a filmmaker, it's like, yeah. this is truth. And you know, because you still, it's a documentary. It has to be informative, but it has to be entertaining. So you know, all right, that's a wow moment. This is, this is going to be big. Absolutely. So for people who want to know how they can see this documentary, where they can see this documentary, let's give them the info. Sure, yeah. So we're in production now. We're going to wrap principal photography in June. Then we'll be in post-production editing for four months. And then we're going to premiere it at the Lip Bar. Our target date is October. Our plan is to do uh, screenings at the Lip Bar, premiering there, and then going from the South Bronx to the North Bronx. We also want to screen it in film festivals, and obviously on BronxNet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. And so, 1.5 million people in the borough of the Bronx. Uh, Estimated population. Et no, that's the yeah, estimate. We know it's a whole lot more than that. Mm -hmm. 42, square, uh, 42 square miles, no independent bookstores, and 1.5 million is a documentary that's being done. And we've got Gregory Hernandez, executive producer, Edwin Torres, associate producer, working on uh, the film, also here with us here today. Before we leave, I want you to just give a little bit of your perspective in doing all this work, in seeing this. What would you say to elected officials, those people out there, about the importance of literacy and what we need to be seeing out here today? Uh, literacy and poverty often intertwine. Uh, when we talk about a literacy crisis, we talk about solving it. You need a community solution. So you actually have to talk to the people on board. Not just the community board people, but people who are actually starting initiatives. I talked to politicians. We've uh, interviewed Rafael Salamanca. We're going to interview the Bronx Borough President in a couple of weeks. Oftentimes when we talk to politicians, they'll say, well, I've done this and I've done this. Okay, what are you going to do next? What is the next big proponent or your next big initiative? Uh, what, how are you going to allocate funds toward that? Uh, are you going to get the you know, uh, de Blasio administration involved? So what are the big ideas that we can have here? Not a think tank, a mm -hmm. Bronx tank. How are we going to solve this? So let's get the people who are on the ground, let's take a grassroots initiative and tackle this. And that's what we're trying to show in this documentary, and that's when we interview the board president, we're going to ask, when you promised Barnes and Nobles would return, was that a broken promise or an opportunity for something greater? We hope it's the latter. All right, Gregory, everyone, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank the documentary is called 1.5 Million, and we uh, encourage you to visit it. Now, if you want to find out more about it, visit a short, I should say, a Bronx Short Documentary.com. Once again, a Bronx Short Documentary.com, and you can find out about 1.5 million. Take a quick break. We've got more open. Stay with us. We're coming right back right after this.